Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes and welcome to my next vlog where you are invited to have tea with me. So in this vlog, I will also be doing a tea leaf reading so you get to have the tea with me and I'll kind of show you my process of doing a tea leaf reading, which is fairly simple, as well as address some other uh, questions and uh, discussion topics that you guys have submitted. If you'd like to submit a question or a topic you'd like me to discuss, please leave that in the comments section below or email me directly and my email is in the description box below. So one of the suggestions was tea leaf reading, so that is why I'm, I am combining this tea leaf reading with a, uh, a vlog discussion. So as you can see here, I have my tea cup here and my tea is brewing. And I have decided, if I can grab it, it's hiding here, to use a bagged tea for this reading. Sometimes I use loose leaf tea, sometimes I use bagged tea. It depends on what type of tea I feel drawn to have for the reading and often it depends on the client I'm reading for. So the tea has been brewing so I'm going to remove the tea bag. So I just put it on my spoon like this and I set it on the saucer while I drink the tea and I will be using those tea leaves later. But for now I will be sipping my tea and talking about some of the questions you guys have submitted. So I've sort of lumped some topics together. So uh, some people have asked, what do I read? Do I read occult texts? Um, what do I study even? So I have a stack of books here, as you can see behind me in my videos, I have a whole bunch of books. But I, I have a, a stack of samples here, which I'll show you. I do read a lot of spiritual and religious texts. Some of them may be considered occult. Um, Books on tarot and astrology would be in the occult category. Um, some would seem mainstream. Many would have sort of a quantum physics bent to them. So I have my, my sample here. And it's, it's religious and spiritual texts across different religions and cultures um, because I do feel there is an underlying message of love and compassion across all religions. So Here's my sample of books I have read. Um, I have a book of Celtic Wisdom by John O'Donohue. Oh, I should point this out. Um, right now I am reading Astrological Gardening because I'm building a second garden or a little farm and I'm going to try to use the, the influence of the moon and stars to help it be very productive. Um, one of my favorite books is Integral Yoga by Sri Aurobindo. There's a, a good variety here. Um, I've read Supernormal, which is Science, Yoga, and the Evidence for Extraordinary Psychic Abilities, and that's by Dean Radin. Again, this is just a sampling, but you can see I have lots of books. I've read Quantum and the Lotus, and that's by Matthew Richard, and I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> but it's a... Matthew Richard is a Buddhist monk, and Trin is a physicist. So it's a very interesting um, discussion. I read that years ago. It's a discussion between the two and the similarities between Buddhist philosophy and what is being discovered in quantum physics now. Um, I love Thomas Merton, and I've read his inner experience. He was a monk. I believe he was Jesuit. Don't quote me on that right now, though. <laughs> Um, I'm in the process, I've read a few of Jung's books, but I'm in the process of reading his Red Book, which is a very thick book. I always have a few books in process. Um, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And if any of you have read this, you realize that yoga, the asana practice, the physical practice, is a teeny, teeny part of what yoga is. Another one of my favorites is The Way of the Bodhisattva or the Bodhicharya of the Tara, and that's by Shanti Deva. I'm going to run out of room here. I'm also right now reading Hildegard von Bingen's Physica, and she was a, I believe, Catholic nun. And it's very interesting, like, she was Catholic, which is a mainstream religion, but she wrote about herbs and plants and even gemstones. So this is a book on healing. She was a great healer, an herbal healer. Um, I've recently bought this, I've not read it yet, is The Book of Instruction in the Elements of the Art of Astrology by Al Biruni. 
And of course I have my ephemerises that I, I reference all, all the time. So right here on my desk I have my sidereal ephemeris for the Vedic astrology readings. So that's sort of like an overview of what I read. But I did have the specific question, do I read occult texts? So in essence, yes, because I read astrology books, I read books on gemstones and herbalism and the paranormal, Dean Radin, scientific study on paranormal abilities, psychic abilities. Um, so yes, I read occult texts. But my impression with that question when it was submitted, um, I think it was asking more, do I read occult texts as in like ancient book of shadows and magic texts, like casting spell texts, te texts, I can't talk. No, I don't read those. I have not read those. Um, which leads to the next question. Actually, let me take a sip of my tea here before it goes cold. Um, am I an active magic practitioner? And I think that question was also submitted with the, with the energy of, do I cast spells? Do I, I don't know, conjure up potions, things like that? No, I do not do that. I do believe in using food and herbs as medicine. So is that considered magic? Or is that considered more mainstream now? Is that considered occult? Um, I do believe in the power of prayer, especially prayers of love, prayers of gratitude, prayers of forgiveness, prayers for guidance for our own, you know, individual prayers for our own inner journeys, prayers for healing. And the answers to those prayers are not always smooth and easy. They're often difficult, but they're to answer our prayers to get us to where we want to be. But I don't cast spells on other people. I don't cast spells or put out prayers to get a new car. I don't, I don't do things like that. So am I an active magic practitioner? It depends on what you define as that. And I do consider myself a shaman woman. I am a healer. I've been a professional healer since 2000. Um, I do not just distance Reiki and shamanic healing. I work with people in person. I do energy healing for animals. Um, and I've been a structural integration body worker for 16 years. And that's all healing work. And some people would consider healing work, non-allopathic, traditional Western medicine healing, magic. Because you're working with energy. And even doing body work, structural integration, reworking people's fascia and, and posture, even though it's solid, to me it's all energy. It's just slower, vibrating, materialized energy. So am I an active magic practitioner? I guess I'll let you answer that question based on what I said there. Okay, but I do believe in the power of prayer. Real prayer, not please let me get an A on my test tomorrow prayer or let me win that car or those types of prayers. Those aren't prayers, those are wishes. And sometimes there's a fine line between that, but true prayer, when it comes from love, when it comes from the heart, when it comes out of compassion, not from anger, not from vengeance. You know, true prayers come from love. True prayers bring healing and growth. Okay, so that's those questions. Let me sip some more of my tea here. Or rather gulp it because otherwise it will take too long to get through it. Um, another question that I've had submitted, and this might have been the same person because I wrote them down here right together, um, was my thoughts on demons and angels. So I do believe that there are positive and negative energies out there. You could say entities. And, you know, you can connect to your angels, your spirit guides for guidance. And uh, it's hard for me to describe this, but when it comes to demons, again, there are negative energies and entities out there. 
and I have experienced I guess what some people would say demonic attacks however I don't feel that we are as helpless in attracting or not attracting angels and demons. So it, if our vibration is very negative, and that could be, you know, you're, you just were in a fight with someone, or someone really betrayed you and you're, you're just raging and you're, you're, you're thinking about revenge, even if it's not something you would ever do, or if it's something you would do. Or you go through this phase in life where you're just full of anger and hate and even fear. You will attract in more of that negative energy. Whether that comes from humans, from spirits or, or demons, that's each individual's experience. So I do believe there are, I guess, what we would call demons, and there are angels, though I see them more as energies. And by working on ourselves, by working on healing our anger, on healing frustration, or dealing with it, learning how to work with it better, knowing how to transform those energies, and it depends on each individual situation, we can attract more of the positive energies and entities into our lives. So I hope that's making sense. But I think the question was like, what are my thoughts on that? And I, I do feel there are, I mean, this is the realm of duality. There are positive and negative energies out there. And you can label them demons, you can label them angels, or you can call them whatever you want. But we have the power within ourselves by working with our own internal states to not attract in negative energies if we so choose and focus on attracting in the positive. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, um, but that kind of leads to the next question. I'm gonna take a little more tea here. Okay, is someone asked, and someone actually asked this a long time ago, but I wrote it down. How do I tap into the spiritual or spirit realm, especially when I'm scared to? So I would say if you're scared, if you're afraid, to not try to tap into it then. Because if you're full of fear, again, you may attract a fearful energy which would be, you know, usually we consider that negative. Fear is an unpleasant feeling. So if you want to connect to spirit guides, or you could say your angels, or the more positive energies, you could say ancestor spirits. And it may be easy to try to start with that. Let's say maybe a grandparent who has passed on, who you see as someone who guided you in life, or someone who's very nurturing and supportive, whether or not you knew them in life. The first thing to do is to be grounded. And you can, grounding practices, and you can sit in meditation, and you may need to practice that for a while first. Um, being outdoors, out in nature can be very grounding, especially even sitting outdoors, meditating in nature, or doing some walking, some moving meditation, working with the earth, just sitting in a quiet room, quiet, cozy room, where you feel undisturbed. So whatever works for you to be grounded, that is, an, uh, is the, like the first piece, kind of. That is the, the grounding foundation to be in a good state of being to connect to spirit guides or the spirit realm. Secondly, kind of when I was talking about, you know, demons and angels and what you attract. If you just were in a fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend and you're, you're just fuming, 
not a good time to try to connect <laughs> because you may attract a more negative energy or just nothing will happen. So you want to, again, if you're, you have some negative emotions, you're just having a bad day, you're frustrated, and often that's when you want to seek guidance. Oh, my dog says hi. Um, wait, meditate for a while, clear your head, send out love, do a forgiveness practice. And so often it starts with forgiving ourselves. So let's say that example, you were in a fight with your, with your partner. Forgive yourself. Send compassion to them. Have compassion for yourself. Wait till you're in a more clear state. And it's easier. And it's less fearful. Because you know you're grounded. You know you're coming from a place of love. It's okay if there's a little bit of, you know, frustration from that fight for that example. But I guess kind of to sum that up. So let's say, for example, you got in a fight with your partner and you're really distraught and you need some guidance and you want to connect to your grandmother ancestor spirit because she was always there to comfort you in life and you need some guidance right now on how to handle the fight you were just in and your relationship. Sit in meditation quietly first. Forgive yourself. For whatever your role was in that fight and fights take two so it goes both ways have compassion for your partner remember the love you feel for them remember the love you feel for self get in a clearer state and then ask ask your grandmother ancestor spirit for guidance and assistance and comfort for the fight you were just in or whatever the difficulty is that you were fighting about. But if you're scared, let's just say you've been wanting to connect to a spirit guide. Find out who your spirit guides are. And you're scared about it. Wait, it's not time. You're not ready. And when you are ready, they will come. And you can also do this, you know, ask for, ask to connect during, you know, in your dreams. So you can set the intention before you go to bed when you're not in a bad mood <laughs> and just ask for guidance, some clarity, some healing, whatever it is from whatever spirit guide you want to connect to. I'm going to use my example. Let's say you want to connect to grandma, ancestor. Just go to bed asking her for guidance. And you do have to practice it. It may not happen that first time. The guidance may come in, you know, grandma spirit might appear in your dream. It may be something occurs in the dream that gives you that answer, whether you see her image in the dream or not. So if you're really scared, it's not the right time. Otherwise, do grounding work. Clear your mind as best you can. Be in a, a relatively good state, emotional state, mental state, and then it, you practice. It is practice. It does take practice. And sometimes it's just a matter of realizing that you're already getting the messages. And by clearing your mind, you actually realize that they're already there. Okay, so let me finish my tea here. So when I'm doing tea leaf reading um, with loose leaf tea, the tea's already in the cup. And so I just sip until most of the water's gone. Here you can see, I don't know if it's gonna tip out so I can't show you on camera. There's maybe a quarter teaspoon of fluid left at the bottom. So if I'm using loose leaf tea, the tea leaves are already there. However, this time I chose to use bag tea. And so what I do when I use bag tea is I rip open the tea bag. Doesn't wanna rip, there we go. And then I take my spoon and I pull, take out about half or a third of a teaspoon of tea leaves. And I mix them in with the little bit of tea that's left on the bottom, the tea water. And I set the tea bag aside. And then I have my tea cup and I'll quickly show you, but I don't want them to tip out. The tea leaves at the bottom. And I'm just going to get those back at the bottom there since I had to show you on camera. So I have the tea leaves at the bottom. I shake it up just a little bit. And then 
I so I have my saucer here and I have a napkin on top to catch the tea that comes out. I take the teacup, put it upside down on the saucer, and I spin it around a few times, and that helps get the excess tea water to drain out. So the tea leaves stick in place when I turn it over. And then I let it sit for a minute or so. Let me pick up the tea leaves I've spilled all over the place. And let me just look over my questions. Yeah, if you guys have any other questions um, based on what I've discussed here, <laughs> uh, please let me know. Um, or if you want to know more um, about what I read or shamanic healing. I did have someone submit a question about um, meditation and shamanic experiences, um, but I'm, that's, that's a longer discussion. Um, yeah, okay. So it's been about a minute, so I'm going to turn the teacup over. And inside we have our tea leaves for the reading. So I set the saucer aside. Occasionally an image will come up on the saucer, but here we just have a clump of tea came out and it's, it doesn't look like anything to me. Now the images in tea cups and tea leaf readings, um, sometimes they look very lifelike, sometimes they don't, and it's, it's the impression I get when I first look at it. So I'm just gonna look at the tea cup here to see what I see. Okay. Interesting, so the it wasn't really a question, but the intention for the tea leaf reading was, was what's coming as we wrap up this new year, wrap up this year and head into the new year. So the first thing I notice in the teacup here is this image right here. And if I can hold it at the right angle on camera. To me, it looks like a beaver. So there's the head, the body, and that's the beaver's tail. And beavers are about building structures. You know, they build dams and rivers and they're, they're great builders. They build good foundations. They're always repairing things. And what I'm feeling the message here with the beaver is, is that as the year comes to an end, I wanna say like, get those repairs done. And something needs fixing, takes care of it. If it has to do with your home, your apartment, your car, it could be personal, but whatever needs fixing, it's like this is a good time to, to take care of it, to wrap it up, wrap it up, to get it taken care of, to fix it as the year wraps up. Now below the beaver here, I see a woman in prayer. So that's her hand, her head, her body, and she's on her knees. And what I'm feeling that is saying is, is as the new year begins, Actually, I want to say around the winter solstice or summer solstice for you in the southern hemisphere is put your prayers out there. And as I was talking about prayers earlier, put your prayers out there. And again, prayers are, prayers come from love. Prayers come from a place of wanting to heal within. Prayers come from wanting guidance on your spiritual journey. So this is not saying pray for that new car for Christmas. Pray for what is truly of value deep within our souls. So put your prayers out there. And then at the bottom of the cup, I can hold this up correctly. So the bottom of the cup, we have these two clumps. And big clumps at the bottom can represent doubts, shadow aspects of ourselves, because they're at the bottom, which is deep, deep in our unconscious. But what it looks like to me is things are breaking up. Things will start to break up deep within ourselves. And I feel like it's, it will be because of these prayers of love that we put out there. That that is helping us to free fears, doubts, shadow aspects, and I wanna say secrets that we have deep within. It will help all that sticky 
energy within our psyches to open up and be free because we are putting out love. Now the other clump, let's turn this around again, right here, this one feels completely different. This feels like a barrier, a way that we have been protecting ourselves. Yet on top of it, there's an animal and it looks like a bear in profile to me. A bear is emerging. And this, this reminds us, bear emerging from this hibernation, you could say, from a cave, from someplace dark, is reminding me of what is the judgment card in the Wildwood Tarot. So it's a bear emerging from a cave, emergence. That through prayer, through prayer, prayers of love, forgiveness, gratitude, we free fear, we free sticky energy, secrets, parts of us we don't want to face, shadow aspects, from weighing us down deep inside. And it allows us to emerge from a protective shield we have put up or emerge from a period of hiding away. And this is at the bottom of the cup, so it's very much emotional and psychological. And we emerge refreshed and renewed, so it is rebirth energy. And then, of course, on the practical level, we have that beaver. Get projects done, get repairs done. You can even say get chores done as the year wraps up. Okay, so that's a quick little general tea leaf reading and my process when I'm using a bag tea for tea leaf readings. So um, let me know if you have any further questions on what we discussed here. Um, and if you're interested in a tea leaf reading, I do a combination of tea leaves and tarot readings. So it's about a 20-ish minute video. Um, I don't record me drinking the tea. <laughs> I just record me reading the tea cups. So you don't have to sit there and watch me drink the tea. Um, but if you're interested in that, just go to my website, peacockseyes.com. Click the Empress card on the right-hand side, and that takes you to my business site. The link is also below to my business site, and just click to row at the top, and you'll get to the tea leaf reading at the bottom there. Um, well, I hope this was interesting for you guys. Um, and again, you can submit more questions, more suggestions for vlogs and discussions. Thanks, everyone.